for programming, I realize a majority of my time is thinking about what I want to do rather than actually typing code and doing it. So last week, I probably spent around 20 plus hours trying to refactor the audiobook maker, turn it into a package and distribute it. Um, as you can see in my previous video, I released my audiobook maker that I've been working on. And one of the things is after it all, I looked back and I was like, I did not actually implement that much additional code. And yet I spent, you know, so much time trying to accomplish what had been done. And so a lot of the time I feel that a majority of my time for the programming side of things is just thinking about what I want to do rather than actually doing or typing or I guess implementing it and just thinking through things and figuring out different ways on how to accomplish a task. And so that is, you know, my big, I guess, I wouldn't really call it a revelation, but um, that is my realization from last week's work and just things. Um, I've kind of had this realization for a while that a lot of the, the time spent is thinking through things and trying to figure out solutions for that. But today is going to be that weekly video I've been talking about for progress that I've done. And let's go ahead and jump into some of the code. So, yeah, I did a ton of um well, I guess I didn't do a ton of coding, but I did a ton of things last week and I just want to review what I did and we'll start with, oh, that's a voice crack right there. Oops. Um, we'll start with the change log. Um, so all of my projects, I have a change log in it. Number one, it helps me keep track of the changes that I've made. And then it also allows me to kind of document uh, different things that I've been learning. So, um, my change log for the audiobook maker was, well, started off with me making a package. So what I realized to make a package is that in order for this to be a one click installable thing for people to use, um, for example, if they don't have Python and all of that, well, I don't want them to have to do all the downloads. I want to make it as hands off as possible. So to do this, I needed a way to give them Python. And so having a virtual environment doesn't work because if you change the directory of a VENV, you kind of just mess up all of the sim links and all of the different paths that are established. So what I ended up having to do was make a Python installation via embeddable packages, which is something that you can do on the Python page. So um, if you are on Python, for example, at the bottom, you have this embeddable package and you can download that. And then inside of the Python package, you can start doing installations. So what you end up having to do is um, install pip and so you have to get pip installed into that embedded package and then just install all of the different libraries that you need to do something like a distributable Python package. And that's what I ended up doing for my audiobook maker to get it working. And one important thing was um, inside of the Python 3.10 or the .pth file, you have to uncomment the import site. So. That was a cool thing that I learned how to do. Um, so now I know how to, you know, package up Python distributions to give them out to people for some of these things that I'm releasing on my channel. It just makes it a little bit quicker and um, a little bit more user friendly. So that was that. And the same day I did some additional revisions. I started changing up the way that I am installing RVC and doing the RVC Tortoise pipeline because um, I made a new lightweight branch and so that entails using the RVC as kind of just a package inside of the audiobook maker instead of installing it or instead of you know doing like a pip installation of it because um, that was proving to be a little bit too difficult or a little bit too modification heavy because I'd have to modify a lot of different files inside of RVC to get it working. So. I figured out just doing this was better and then I changed my um, RVC to TTS pipeline to be called via, via RVC underscore pipe and then you do the dot RVC infer. So that was a small little change. And then lastly, I did some additional things yesterday for the audiobook maker um, and that was making sure that the package is 
only grabbing from the local runtime package so it doesn't accidentally grab from the local or the global python version in case you have python already installed and so that resolved one issue that a user had for me and so thanks to them for testing it out and then i also created a generation settings json and then i added background images to the uh to the code so that was um all of that and if you look at how many lines of code that I have, I only have a thousand lines of code in here. And for the amount of time that I've spent on this, you would think that I would have a little bit more, but a lot of it is just thinking through the logic and figuring out how all of these things are connected. Uh, one, for example, yesterday I spent something stupid like three hours just trying to figure out how to get the background image working for pi qt5 and that was because originally it was having me um it as in i had asked ChatGPT, hey how do i get a background image on a pi qt pi qt gui and originally it was trying to have me do something like q palette um which proved to be um not compatible with the way that I was doing my style sheet. So I have a CSS file that does all of the styling. And so this wasn't working because it would um, either not load the image or it would have the image there stuck forever and I wouldn't be able to clear it. And so what I ended up doing instead was um, I was thinking through it and apparently I guess I can do a image overlay on a widget. So, so what I ended up having to do was just set the background image to the widget that's in the background and that widget is the entire GUI so as you can see it is changing um, you know the size of the image that I have loaded and it's just because it's being overlaid on that um, that widget and a widget just think of it as like this button this button is a widget um, so it's just in the background and I have the image overlaid on it so yeah I can clear a background image and load the image and that in and of itself took about three hours um, just for a little customization thing but I just thought that was that's a cool thing to have I like to customize my GUIs and my layouts so I implemented that into the project so um, a lot of my time last week was just spent trying to refactor the code a little bit, change how some of these things worked. Um, like I said, this was for getting the runtime only package and yeah, just making sure everything works the way that it was supposed to. So the other thing that I wanted to go over was the changes in my RVC TTS pipeline. I believe I'm on the wrong branch, which is why I'm not actually seeing anything. So if I just check my branches, yeah. Uh, switch to lightweight um, now we can see the change logs that I have here so for the lightweight branch of the RVC TTS package I ended up going with something that was lightweight and I named it lightweight because I removed a lot of things that were inside of my RVC infer and so I think I went over this last week so I'm not gonna go over it today but um, this one, I ended up doing a change so that I could use, um, so that I could install the GitHub package as a um, regular package instead of having to install it in editable mode. And so I found that in order to do this, I just had to simply put it inside of its own folder and then just name it something descriptive like RVC underscore pipe so that now the way that I call it is RVC underscore pipe dot RVC infer. So this allows me to set it up and call it from anywhere inside of the modules or Python scripts that I need without having to install it in editable mode because that did not allow for easy distribution. So, um, you know, the lightweight branch, I think eventually I'm going to turn all of these lightweight branches into the main branch. I think it's a more sustainable way of going about it and um, doing that. So that the, those are like a majority of the actual coding changes that I did. It's not too, too, too much. Um, like I said, a lot of the time was just spent thinking through things and changing things and redoing implementations that I already had done. Like turning this into a lightweight branch, I didn't really have to do that, but because I wanted to distribute a package, um, it called for a different way of doing it. And so you know, I had to figure that out. 
and got that running. So if you haven't seen the most recent video, it is this um, AI audiobook maker demo and installation. So that's what I'm talking about. That's the thing that I was working on last week. And um, it's complete for distribution right now. And uh, you can go check it out if you want. Um, that is one thing that spent a lot of my time last week. And the current thing that I am working on is um, well, I've got two things or I've got a couple of things that um, I might work towards either starting on the local 11 labs project, which is basically just a um, extrapolation of the audiobook maker, just turning it into like a Gradio interface. So I could do something like that. I could work on that or I can work on making Tortoise TTS into a distributable package as well. So that was another thing that I was thinking about in order to make it a little bit easier to distribute because then now all I have to do is say, hey, download this file, this package, and everything you need works and functions as it should. So that would be nice, but that sounds like dependency hell and um, a lot of modification that I'll have to do. So I've um, not prioritized that right now, but something like that will be coming um, as long as I get the time to do it. So the other thing that I wanted to comment on was um, AMD and Mac users. So unfortunately, I don't have an AMD graphics card, so I can't really test things out. And I don't have a Mac, so I can't test things out there as well. Even if I did, I don't know if I would have the time to um, go through all the debugging, go through all of the development process that I would need to do to convert them into the equivalent. Um, as well, AMD doesn't really support Windows yet. It it does via WSL, but that's not a robust option to distribute. And it kind of does it through Direct ML as well. I've seen uh, projects use Direct ML, but that's just a lot of things that I would have to learn. So maybe in the future, when I do uh, get some extra cash or a GPU, perhaps that is AMD, I can try some of those things out. But at the current moment, those things are kind of on the back burner as I move towards other different projects. So just wanted to make a quick comment on that because I know there are a ton of users out there that would love to see it there. I just currently don't really have the time to uh, dive into all of that and then the hardware to do that. So if anyone is open to developing, you know, the AMD side of things or the Mac side of things, I'm up all for that. So, you know, you can just do a pull request and uh, I can verify and review it. And uh, that would be awesome too. And if you have any questions on how I implemented things, I can try to guide you or try to help you through my way of thinking for um, some of these projects if you want to work on that. So, and that's going to be a majority of the updates that I had for last week. And lastly, I did want to thank the new members of the channel. Thank you guys for choosing to support me monetarily. It really helps it out and I appreciate it greatly and, you know, continues to push me forward towards, you know, doing the free content on my channel and all of that cool stuff. So once again, thank you for that. If you want to join up and be a member, um, there's that join button down below, which is, I wish it just was just called membership, but it's called join. And uh, yeah, that's going to be today's video. See you guys later.